On June 18th, a Honeywell-operated Gulfstream G450 successfully completed the first transatlantic biofuel flight. It landed at Paris Le Bourget about 9.40 a.m. local time after a seven-hour flight from Morristown Airport in New Jersey. It was also the first business jet to be powered by a biofuel, which in this case was derived from Camelina. The twin jet's Wright Rolls-Royce Te 611-8C engine was run on a 50-50 blend of Honeywell UOP's green jet fuel and petroleum-based jet fuel. Notably, the milestone biofuel flight closely followed the route taken across the Atlantic by Charles Lindbergh in 1927. Honeywell UOP Vice President James Rokoski gave more details about the green jet fuel flight during a press conference shortly after landing. Not only was it a record-setting uh, transatlantic flight uh, on Honeywell green jet fuel and, and showcasing the Honeywell technologies, but it was a fantastic opportunity for us to celebrate an important event which occurred just a few weeks ago, which was the certification of the green jet fuel for use by AST. Our particular flight here today uh, lowered its carbon footprint by 5.5 tons of carbon on the way over from, uh, from the United States. And if you, if you extrapolate that into, into use, even just a 10% use in commercial aviation would lead to more than 50 million tons of CO2 reduced uh, by the use of Honeywell's green jet fuel. And derived fuels have aromatics and other materials in them which help with lubricity and seal swell in the engines. And the synthetic paraffinic kerosenes that are made um, in today's biofuels actually don't contain some of those materials. So there is a technical hurdle to be overcome. We've actually overcome that hurdle at Honeywell. We've actually created those aromatics from synthetic and renewable sources. The challenge then really becomes more of a practical one, in which case you have to ask yourself, when will you be able to achieve the 60 billion gallons a year that, uh, of, of jet fuel that's consumed uh, on an annual basis? And, um, in the we expect that in another 30 years or so, we will be at the point where we will be able to submit to 50-50 um, blends of fuel across the globe. But getting to that point is going to take probably nearly all those years.